So uh, we're going to go back. We're going to take a look at some fashion and cosmetic brands. I think really, really fascinating to see how they how they go about protecting their brands. So let's get into it. So the first things first, I just want to share my screen right here. I'm going to show you guys. So this is Benefit Cosmetics, and I want to show you guys how they use trademarks to protect their marks. We're going to get started by going to tsdr.uspto.gov. I'm going to, I want to do this as if you guys were following along just so that you guys can learn practical skills that you guys can also use whenever you guys are doing this on your own. So first thing is I just went to benefitcosmetics.com. I'm going to scroll down and I see here that they're owned by Benefit Cosmetics LLC. So this is a really, really good way to find marks for a particular company. So I'm going to say I scrolled way down. I'm looking here. So this is the owner. So I'm going to use this name when I do my search. So I'm going to go back to tsdr.uspto.gov and I'm going to click on search trademarks. Now, once I'm here, I'm going to click on basic word mark search and I'm going to search by owner. So I'm going to search by Benefit Cosmetics LLC. So I'm going to select owner, Benefit Cosmetics. Let's just look at all the live and dead marks for now. And we're going to see there's 238. Now, just out of curiosity, let's go, let's, let's qualify this. Let's just see how many are how many are live. So this is called the live or dead indicator. And uh, the reason why that happened was because they're doing ORs. Let me, I have to add these, I have to put this in quotes. So once I put that in quotes and hit submit, okay, we see 120. So there's 128 live benefit marks. And if you want to figure out the dead ones, you're going to see there's 110. So kind of neat, kind of also neat to see which ones were abandoned. So this is really, really interesting analysis, right? Because you can actually see by just by looking at this, you can look at the marks that were abandoned that were filed for, but then weren't pursued for one reason or, or another. Now this might be a business reason. There might've been a business reason why they didn't pr pr proceed with sprinkles or bubbles or lip rights. Uh, we can get some information if we go into it. Likely what happened was there was probably a rejection, but yeah, so there was an office action. So for whatever reason, the company decided not to pursue this particular mark. And you can see this is covering cosmetics under class three. Most of these that we're going to see are going to be class three. So a lot of class three, probably also online retail under class 42, maybe brick and mortar under class 35. But those are very common marks for big box cosmetic brands. So let's go back. Let's take a look. Some other interesting other uh, dead marks. So this is what I'm talking about. Hello, Halo Gorgeous, right? Uh, pun, Hello Gorgeous. Uh, pretty, pretty neat. I think they have a lot of really clever names that they actually pursue and they file trademarks on. Again, this is a, a 1B filing. So they file initially in the US. And again, these marks that we're looking at here initially, these are all abandoned, but it's interesting because they were filed, but then for whatever reason, the company decided not to pursue it. Now it might've been, there was an office action that was in the way, possibly another mark that was confusingly similar that would have prevented registration. But for whatever reason, um, these marks, they don't currently, aren't currently pursuing according to the, the trademark database. So in this case, they didn't file a statement of use. So what that usually means is that they applied for the mark because they were interested in doing it, but maybe the marketing team decided to mix up their strategy and change their mind and no longer pursue this particular mark. Let's go back. Let's take a look at some other, other marks by benefit. Optimistic. So again, again, you see these, these interesting puns. Um, I think that, that that's one of the neat things I like to look at this examples like this because it, it encourages creativity, happy brows, archie gorgeous. So you see a lot of these puns. Now, what's interesting is, is that they, they do spend the resources to initially file them, but then for whatever strategic reasons, it, they're not pursued. Here's a very specific one, regional SF winter wonder glam, wonder wow, roller, solstice. Now, these other ones were dead. Now these were actually registered but then probably they stopped using them, which is why they are now dead. Now, these in particular, you know, they're registered because they have a registration number. These over here aren't registered because they never, they, they are, don't have a registration number. Let's just take a look at one, world famous neutrals, randomly cosmetics, makeup kits, cancel class three, stay flawless. This one was also canceled. Dream screen, canceled. Now let's go back and let's look at some live marks. So interesting to look at the, the dead ones, but let's look at the live ones. So remember, if you see this registration, it means it's already registered. If you don't, it means it's still pending. And as you can see, they have a lot of really interesting names that they're pursuing. Love your brows, Flamingo, Terra. Let's take a look at some of these. Now these are probably pretty new, as you can see, only a few months, September 16, 2020. 
Now, one interesting way to navigate is there's a lot of word marks in this one, this particular company, as you can see, is to use image list. It kind of gives you a nice visual display, presents to you all the various words. So I'm going to zoom out. I think you guys can still see nicely. Yeah, you can still see nicely. It looks like in the video. Um, so as you can see, we have all these marks here. They pursued Starla, Butterfly. Again, I, I, I really commend them on their on pursuing puns, Peach and Sunny. I, I think that it just goes to it goes to their creativity. It goes to how their willingness to to file for for creative trademark names and then also use them possibly in actual marketing and in their marketing strategy. So ah, so this is probably the core mark you guys are probably mostly familiar with. You probably recognize that color. Same with this one here on the left. Let's take a look at this one. As you can see, this one is in fact registered. As you can see, Benefits Cosmetics. So it's an it's it's a Delaware LLC, but headquarters looks like are in San Francisco. And let's actually take a look. Let's see what what they actually submitted as a specimen. Just just as a learning learning example, just so we can get some more information. So my system is being a little slow. My apologies, but if you click on Documents, you can actually see the specimen that was submitted. So right here, benefit, benefit. So it's on the actual box. Um, and you can see that's just the specimen. So remember, the specimen shows actual proof of use in commerce so that you're actually selling the goods. And one way to do it is to have it on the packaging or on the package or on the actual container itself that has the goods inside. And remember here, in this case, class three, it's going to be class three all day, cosmetics, class three all day. Um, here's the benefit. Brow bar. Looks like let's take a look at this one. It's very visual, nice color. Kind of inter interested uh, to see if or why they have or have not uh, filed a color mark because it looks like their color is also quite distinctive. Like if you go to their website, you can see this this nice pink color. It's pretty distinctive. Maybe that's something that they'll consider pursuing possibly in the future. But let's take a look. So this is brow bars. Okay, so this is salon services under class forty four. Again. A lot of your big cosmetics brands, they're probably going to have clothing under class 25. They might have leather goods under class 18. Some might have jewelry under class 14. Uh, definitely, definitely, though, brick and mortar, class 35, online presence, class 42. But cosmetics, cosmetics class 3, that's going to be probably where the majority of classes are going to fall into. That The majority of their marks are going to fall under. It's going to probably going to be class 3 under cosmetics. But as you can see here, here they're offering, offering beauty salon services. So that's going to fall under class 44. So again, a lot of a lot of interesting names, Punch Pop, Cabral. It's a lot of really, really creative names. I think that that this this just goes to show their creativity and their willingness to to try different things and, and be creative with their names and their branding. And it's reflected also obviously in their trademark, in the trademarks that they file and in the trademarks that they register. So this is covering cosmetics, eyebrow color, eyebrow cosmetics, and eyebrow gel. So do the hula, give me brow, cushion calm, air patrol, browsing, soak and control. So all these, all these interesting names. Uh, they have a whole lot of them too. And this looks like probably their core, probably their oldest mark. Let's take a look at this one. So this is the word mark benefit. And actually, I'm sorry, it's a design mark, uh, but this was registered back in 2007. So, and as you can see, benefits. Benefit Cosmetics LLC is class 25, so in her clothing, actually. Let's take a look. Let's see what clothing they submitted back then. Let's see if those records are available. So this is one of their early marks, again, 2007. And here's a specimen right here. Ah, there you have it. So they're the aprons. It looks like they covered blocked off faces just to protect privacy. So. Again, pretty cool episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. The basic idea is, is be creative with your names and your branding. Cos Benefit Cosmetics gives a great example of that. Really creative with their names, a lot of puns, a lot of interesting creative marketing strategies around that. And, and I, I think it's neat that they pursued them also with trademarks. And, and even though some of their trademarks they decided not to pursue, it is always a good idea to file a trademark, especially if, you have a, if you're a company of that size with those, those kinds of resources. It's always really, really good to secure the name before you invest hardcore in all the branding. <music>